Welcome back to the next video, everybody. Today, we're going to be looking at the key properties of the Fry curve. So we've got a lot of generic information about the Galois representations attached to elliptic curves over the rationals. So now we're going to apply that information specifically to the Fry curve and see what kind of information we can come up with. All right, so let's recall. Let's let P be a prime. and Let's let E over Q be an elliptic curve. The representation rho EP just encodes the Galois action on the inverse limit over N of the P to the N torsion of E which is isomorphic to ZP squared, where ZP is the p-adic integers. And then row bar EP, which is the mod P residual representation attached to row EP, just encodes the Galois action on the P torsion of E by itself. Okay. Let's also recall the Fry curve setup. Let's let P be a prime that's at least five. What do we want to show to finish the proof of Fermat's last theorem? We want to show that the equation X to the P plus Y to the P plus Z to the P equals zero has no non-trivial integer solutions meaning no solutions over the integers, such that all the entries are non-zero. So what we'll do is we'll assume there is such a solution, ABC, by way of contradiction. Recall, we can assume that this solution is primitive, meaning any two of the three entries are co-prime. We can also assume that B is even and that A is negative one mod four. Also, under these assumptions, we constructed what we called the Fry curve EF associated to the solution ABC which is given by the equation y squared equals x times x minus a to the p times x plus b to the p. And we showed this is a semi-stable elliptic curve over q. We also computed its conductor, its minimal discriminant, and the ramification of its p torsion field. Okay, so here's the big theorem of today. Theorem two, keep all the above notation, the Fry curve, the prime p, the solution ABC, et cetera. Then three things are true. Row bar EFP is an absolutely irreducible representation. So remember that means it has, that means it's irreducible even when you tensor up to the algebraic closure of Q. Okay. Row bar EFP is odd. That means the determinant of this representation evaluated at complex conjugation is negative one. And then three, row bar EFP is unramified outside 2P and flat at P. Remember, flat is kind of the correct analog of unramified at the prime P itself. Okay, so two of the three of these things we've already proven, basically. So let's look at the proof. Statements two and three just follow from theorem one, because uh, we know row bar EP is always odd, regardless of the elliptic curve, right? Uh, so, so that's easy. And then why are we flat at P? Well, you're flat at P if and only if P divides the p-adic valuation of the minimal discriminant. But you see P is a prime that's at least five. And two is the only prime that even has a chance at satisfying the property that the two-adic valuation of the minimal discriminant isn't divisible by two because everything else in the minimal discriminant is a is raised to a power that's an integer multiple of P to, to the two P power, you see, but P is a prime that's at least five, you see, so P isn't two. So we're definitely flat at P. So this is, these are just theorem one, all right? Now, why is this residual representation mod P absolutely irreducible? That's the question. Okay, so I'm gonna prove that for you. First, we're gonna show it's just irreducible. So suppose that it's reducible. What does that mean? That means, uh, the Fry curve contains a subgroup X of order P, which is Q rational. Because what we're saying is that the action on the P torsion is reducible by assumption, while the P torsion of EF is isomorphic to, to Z mod PZ squared. So it's a group of order P squared. For it to be reducible, there would have to be a Galois invariant subgroup of order P inside your group of order P squared. But Galois invariant in this case just means Q rational. Okay, now EF is a semi-stable elliptic curve. So the action of Galois on X is either via the trivial character or via, or via the mod P cyclotomic character by the previous video, all right? In the first case, so in the case that this action is given by the trivial character, EF has a Q point of order P. I mean, that's simple to see. The Galois action on a generator of X is literally given to be trivial in this case. Okay, well, there's your point of order P, the generator. Okay, and it's it's defined over Q. All right, but look, the points of order two on EF are Q points. 
because what are the points of order two on a, an elliptic curve given in short wire Strauss form? Well, they're the point at infinity and then they're the roots of the cubic on the right-hand side. But the roots of the cubic on the right-hand side are zero, a to the p and negative b to the p, which are certainly, those certainly admit rational coordinates, right? So I have at least, you know, I have four points of order two on EF that are rational. But then I also have this subgroup of order P that's Q rational. So EQ torsion, so the, the torsion subgroup of the rational points of E, I should say EF, contains at least a copy of, of some group of order four. So that, that would actually be Z mod two Z cross Z mod two Z. And then cross some you know, group of order P, which is cyclic. So some cross some copy of Z mod PZ, but this group here has order at least 20, uh, four times P because P is at least five. But the point is Mazur's torsion theorem tells me exactly what EQ tors is allowed to be. It's allowed to be one of 15 groups and none of them have order 20 or, or larger. So we've contradicted Mazur's torsion theorem, okay? So there's your contradiction in that case. What about if the action on X is via the mod P cyclotomic character? Well, then you just look at the isogenous curve EF prime given by EF mod X and you repeat the argument above. That'll have a Q point of order P and the action there will be trivial basically by the Vey pairing. Okay, don't worry about that. Okay, so just repeat the above argument on this isogenous elliptic curve. Basically kill off the part where the Galois action is cyclotomic and you've got kind of an elliptic curve left over that's where the Galois action is trivial and you can repeat. Okay, so there's a contradiction in either case. Robar EFP is irreducible. Why is it absolutely irreducible? Here's a neat trick that you can use. Basically, since you have an odd representation and since the prime P is at least three in question, in fact, it's at least five. So here's the trick. Robar EFP is odd, right? So the eigenvalues of the image of complex conjugation are plus or minus one. Um, you can use the fact that the determinant is negative one and that complex conjugation has order two. It's a quick little exercise for you. Okay. Now, P isn't two. It's at least five. So these are distinct eigenvalues. That's the point. Okay. If rho bar EFP decomposes over the algebraic closure of FP into two one-dimensional sub-representations, this the point is this decomposition would have to be the one admitted by these two eigenvalues. It would have to break down into the, uh, the decomposition given by these two lines. Okay, but that would be a decomposition over FP, right? Because these eigenvalues are defined over FP. All right, so that contradicts irreducibility. So basically when you have an odd representation like this and you're working in uh, two dimensionally uh, and you have, so if you have oddness plus irreducibility plus the prime is at least three and you're working two dimensionally, then you actually automatically have absolute irreducibility. And I'll be proving a more general fact about this later and way later in chapter 16 of my notes. Okay, so there you go. So here, so digest these. These are the three kind of key properties of the Fry curve attached to a non-trivial solution of the Fermat equation with exponent a prime P at least five that we're gonna need to finish the proof of Fermat's theorem. So we'll start talking about Galois representations attached to cusp forms next video. So I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.